Um, all right, so now I want to go ahead and check out Inside Star Citizen Arena Reborn Part 2. So last week, we had a bunch of uh, just cool revelations and stuff from uh, Arena Command that we saw um the new huds we saw like a, that they've been working on getting the lobby system working don't know for certain how much of that's actually going to be coming in 3.20 so far they've only just shown us the framework but for the most part it's mainly just been for the spaceships uh today with arena reborn part two i do believe that they want to show us more about the on foot stuff so without further ado let's go ahead and check it out I'm still here, still trying to still learn there, all the still buttons Still stuck do. on the chair. <laughs> so while I'm at it, let's not waste any more of your time and get you all right into part two of this enormous Arena Commander update that's scheduled to make its way to you in the upcoming Alpha 320. And uh, I'll be right here when you get back. Dear best Jared impersonation. Oh, I don't want Last to... time on Inside Star Citizen. Just yell yep. really loud. Last time on Inside Star Citizen. <laughs> I don't even know what accent yeah, that was. Yeah. All right. Are you excited to be doing two ISCs in a row? It took me over 80 minutes in what we had only scheduled to be an hour to film what was probably a 15 minute episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> Especially to Jared's team. That's, uh, that's <laughs> show sorry, business for you, to be it's fair. Awesome to be getting such attention shun on Arena Commander. And uh, I'm excited to finally bring it up to what I believe it has potential to be. I think it's cool that pinned. Arena Commander is getting this much attention because like for the longest time people have thought that you know with the PU going into 3.0 and stuff they just abandon it uh, and uh, you know it's just nice that it's not the case because it still has a lot of use you know like uh, and it had a lot more use and hopefully once this is done that use will come back you know things like you know private events and stuff like that things like being able to play with friends without like having to worry about some random coming in and just ruining it whatever you're trying to put together you know looking forward to it it's like every other week asking to put atmosphere in the arena commander and uh now they finally have it they can stop whining <laughs> <laughs> They're going to whine about something else. I yeah, you know, like whining, we can just change our whining scope to something else it. now. All right, so here we are. So we learned that last so week. last ISC, we talked about a lot about flight, but there's mm -hmm. two other major parts that we want to be talking about here. And the first is FPS combat. There we go. So What's FPS the other combat one? combat in Arena Commander is so important because you need a place to practice shooting each other without actually dying for real like you do in the persistent universe yeah. so we need to make that experience as close to the persistent universe while still having it be fun and unique now that's the big thing for me to be honest because like we all know that star citizen does not respect your time at all when you want to do anything it doesn't matter if you want to go ahead and do like a uh one of those dynamic events or if you want to just do a box mission there's a lot to like start up and wind up before you go from a to b and being shot means that that all kind of resets the thing is right is that the people who enjoy arena commander and star marine and stuff like that have a very specific play style based on how the game in there works at the moment you know it's not like you don't play it the same way as i guess i would play star citizen which is to be a bit slower because obviously your life has a bit more weight because if you die there's so much you know that you have to do to come back out there again Instead, in Arena Commander and Star Marine, you just kind of, you sprint around corridors with a shotgun, gunning people down because, hey, you'll respawn anyway, and this way you can probably get faster and more kills because other people are probably more primed to be a bit slower. Now, how do you make it so that people in Star Marine play slower? Do you want people to play slower? I guess it's down to Star Citizen and how they want things to do, because right now, I mean, when I speak to people who do use and who play Star Marine, they're like, I love how fast-paced it is. It's basically like Apex Legends or whatever like that. Uh, but that's in my mind, completely, completely backwards when it comes down to like, you know, how they intend Star Citizen to be treated. We'll see how they change it and I, we'll see how they go forwards with this, man, because I don't know. So you access Star Marine game modes exactly the same as we showed last week with the new front end, new lobby system and jump straight into the action. Marine life. So with our existing maps, the BFX team are helping us out and doing a pass over everything. So it might not right. be finalized in the footage that you're seeing here, but we're excited to see where they can take it and uplift all of our levels because they're in need of a facelift. And uh, we've been working hard on fixing a lot of the 
the bugs and frustrations across the maps. What I know is they did a lot of bug fixes recently. Um, I don't know, we're not meant to just say bug fixes. Fixing uh, doors that weren't meant to be there, resolving the fact that you could just smash through the glass, which you're not meant to be able to smash through, and just go into EVA in the middle of elimination, which is bad. Um, <laughs> being able to get into areas you shouldn't be able to get into. So we fix those up. In terms of new maps, right. we've got a variation on a fan favorite, Echo 11, where introducing that to elimination. The Echo 11 is quite a big Echo map 11 for is huge, control. Yeah. For elimination, we've tightened it up. We've uh, cut off access to the D room and right. some of A room and made it a little bit smaller so that the action can be more compact and suitable for elimination. So last week, we showed off Security Post Korea being introduced to dogfighting maps. Oh, but dude, okay, yeah, also yeah. introduced it to FPS maps. That's so you'll sick. be able to play elimination, control, and some of the new game modes on Korea itself. Yeah, Korea as a FPS map makes a lot of sense. And it looks like they're also expanding it to be out so you can go outside for it too, which is cool. So to recap, for Star Marine, you'll be able to play on the Good Doctor, a larger version for, of Echo 11 for control, small one for elimination, and the okay. same for Damien and get Damien comms, as well as Security Post Korea, which has been introduced to elimination and control. Sweet. So with the Good Doctor, at some point along the line, all the trees disappeared. So a designer went in and restored that, so it's back in this beautiful oasis area that it's meant to be in and fixed the lighting and various other issues. It uh, basically looks like it's on her I don't right? know how. Uh, and now Good Doctor's looking beautiful again. So Star Marine is a personal favorite of mine. I love FPS combat, and I'm so excited to be uh, working on more additions to uh, the FPS area of Arena Commander. And that leads us to something I'm... Oh, those gun animations on the arc light, man. Look at that. Super excited it's so excited to talk about. And that's experimental modes. Oh, here we are. Experimental modes are important because it allows us to get back into what the real meaning of Arena Commander used to be, which is playtesting and making sure that things that are made for the PU and Arena Commander and Squadron work the way they're meant to. It allows us to put stuff into a testing environment where we can quickly check if just something works where we want it to, essentially. Right. Somewhere along the line, we lost that. And when we formed the Arena Commander feature team, we knew that Arena Commander has to stand on its own and have these flagship game modes and new things that are unique to Arena Commander. But we still want to support the persistent universe and all our ventures that we go on. Experimental modes are important to us because it gets things in your hands quicker. Instead of waiting for these big, huge game modes to release, we can right. test things out uh, periodically for a day, a week, a month. That's the coolest thing about it, to be fair, is the fact that now you don't have to wait for it to go into the PU and screw up maybe perhaps like you know how you fly and maybe now uh trading is a bit of a mare but like now it's all inside the uh arena commander if they want to like go ahead and let, let's say play around with master modes or they want to go ahead and like play around with like the new flight model you can just you can go into that and see what that would like be like in arena command instead before going into the main game you know at the very least you know if it's inside a tab that says experimental it'll stop people from complaining as much as they do and also allow people who do want to put in the time to give the feedback that's necessary to then deliver this to the rest of the game that's really cool i like this a lot month and get it into your hands sooner rather than later right so let's dive in and take a look at some of the experimental modes that we have been working on Another thing is like, you know, the the argument before was like, oh, yeah, with Arena Commander, though, like, wouldn't it like, uh, wouldn't it split the community, right? Like, uh, there are only X amount of people who play Star Citizen. Like, if we had Arena Commander working good, then, you know, there'll be less people in the verse. I mean, unless, apart from free flies, usually you only have like maybe a handful of people in any of the other modes like Star Marine or AC. Um, but I think nowadays, especially with the success of things like Invictus and stuff, there are a lot more people playing the game. So having more people bleeding in from the PU to Arena Commander specifically, I don't think that'll really matter. Also, that guy's wrist looks broken. The first experimental mode is single weapon elimination. So okay. you can jump in with uh, what will be pistols for, at first. Pistols only. <laughs> From a developer's standpoint, single weapon elimination gives Star us the Marine is to low really fee test low key fun as heck we want to get when it works. <laughs> when the it netcode isn't busted. Every when the spawning the logic it doesn't and make sure that it completely works just right. mess you up. We know that players want to test their skill against each other, and the best way to do that is to make sure everyone's equal. Right. So everyone gets the same weapons, everyone gets the weakest weapons in our first version, and they get to just see who's better than the other. Yeah, that's With cool. 320, we're introducing pistol only elimination. And that, that animation. Be, uh, the arc like. Was that a new animation? I hate to pause for something as simple as that, but like. 
They've been working on uh, getting two kinds of animation types like working together, like the uh, the ragdoll animations with like the canned animations. Uh, they, 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 it was on the roadmap at one point, but like it never came through. We're 320. We're introducing. He grabs his face, one. and it looks like okay, that looks. Wait, like nah, never. No, then he yeah, it is. It, it tweened. It went from uh, static to uh, or like pre baked to ragdoll. And that will be that's cool. Be, uh, the Maybe three twenty pistol. And it's a personal favorite of mine. It adds increased time to kill, uh, and uh, it came originally from playing with you guys, the Does community. Does the guy have a, and a fire end, extinguisher both, on his uh, back? A long session of Star Marine, and someone threw out the idea of like, what can we do like a pistol only round? And I just had so much fun with that. We ended up playing for at least another hour. Yeah, I mean, honestly, pistol only in a, in a Star Marine is one of the funnest things. And again, you know, we we used to do this all the time without needing to have some random game mode for this. You know, all you got to do is go in with friends, you know, like you used to do back when you could go in and you could make your own lobbies and you could do that. You could have your own private lobbies. If they were just to give us that, we wouldn't have to need this. But uh, but regardless, I think it's cool that there's a mode that you can go in and you know that you don't have to like have to, you know, make sure that that's the case. Nowadays, you can't just, you know, go with a bunch of friends because all it's going to take is some someone else to join that group of 12 who are all using pistols and they'll gun you down with a SMG. But yeah, um, the, the, the fire extinguishers like uh, there is interesting because obviously like they've been working on fire propagation and that's a whole different uh, video altogether. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think they mentioned before in some testing that the fire extinguisher actually killed somebody. I think it was like in some theaters of war training or like a uh, theaters of war testing. So I don't know why the fire extinguishers are in Star Marine, aside from the fact that maybe perhaps it's there for testing in case you want to shoot it as maybe like uh, an impromptu bomb or something like that. But for wielding it and carrying it on your back, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so that mode is inspired by that. So for this patch, it's just pistols only, but we can change it up at any point. It's simple parameters. And uh, if the weapons team come to us with a new weapon they want to test out, they want to get that analytic data, they want to get the fun factor, All you right. can put it into Arena Commander, whatever that weapon is only, and see how you guys like it. I think um, what would be kind of cool, I guess, would be like uh, those typical uh, Counter-Strike um, game modes, right? Like where everybody starts with pistols, you get a kill, and then you go up another kind of gun. Maybe like you, like you go up in pistol levels, and then you go up in rifle levels, and that kind of thing instead of just this. I think that's this, Gun Rush. <laughs> the next experimental mode that will work there it is. is Gun Rush. <laughs> now, names are temporary. Uh, they might change between now and release. But Gun Rush is where you start off with a pistol, and as you get a kill, it upgrades you. All so right. With every kill, you go to the next type of gun. You go through LMGs, SMGs. Some special weapons I won't spoil. Special weapons, weapons and right. even the route. And then we've put some surprises in there for whoever gets to the last round. That looks pretty janky so Gun Rush for is an internal server. It's super fast so pace. Janky? It lets you get your hands on many different weapons as you cycle through them and get some experience with stuff that you hadn't had. For example, I had no idea how to use shotguns. Still don't really, but I'm a little bit better at them now thanks to Gun Rush. So Gun Rush is only possible thanks to the Jesus. refactors we've been doing to the spawning and loadout modules. So we can, instead of refreshing your entire loadout, switch out just the gun and it's super fast. Oh, that's and cool. Now, whereas before it was a bit of a clunky thing to do. That's really cool. Fingers crossed they've also fixed spawning logic because nothing in Star Marine is worse than dying and then respawning with your back, you know, to somebody else and then dying again immediately. And it's almost as bad if it happens and somebody spawns in front of you because they're invulnerable for like maybe a half a second. So maybe they can kill you. Maybe you like you empty your mag and then they shoot back at you. Tonk Royale seems really cool though. That's awesome. In the next experimental mode, we're bringing ground vehicles to Arena Commander. And that is Tonk Royale. So there's going to be three locations for Tonk Royale. It's going to be... An experimental Kirsten, mode with fires would be really sick though, Dex. So how it works is simply we have a massive arena. We drop you in on these three various maps and you just go to town. There's going to be three versions of Tonk Royale. All right. First is a classic elimination deathmatch. Mm -hmm. uh, respawns, uh, just get as high a score as you can. Second is squadron battle. I so love this world of tanks team versus team tanks. In squadron battle, it's super exciting because you can run as just the driver or you can join one of your teammates and be their gunner. Yeah. And the third is still being worked on. I'm not sure if it's going to be making this release, but 
super excited about it is what hardcore is it? elimination. Hardcore so elimination. Essential elimination, but you've only got the single life. So battle royale. When a tumble storm gets introduced to the verse, we'll be sure to add that to Tonk Royale as well. All right. Now, I really do like the Tonk Royale thing for one thing in particular, and that's the fact that in the verse, you can do just this. But again, you know how we talked about this game not respecting your time in the least? I imagine trying to get, you know, 12 Tonks into a C2 Hercules to fly to a specific location to have a duel. It's about maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours just to set up, you know, and that's with, you know, like uh, vehicles crashing and stuff like that, like, you know, removed from the equation, let alone 30Ks. And then once that happens, then how do you even know who won because of the one guy left? And then if you want to do it again, tough. There's another one hour, like, you know, startup again. It's ridiculous. After 320, we'll also be finishing off our race and refactor, which all right. allow us to make maps faster. And hey, they've all gone ahead and they've gone that those new um, checkpoints moved into some of these other racetracks as well. So far, they were only visible in our corp. Merges PU and AC racing systems together. And it's going to be a more streamlined process for us. Our design. That looks so much better. Designers and a better experience for you, less buggy on both ends. So with the racing refactor, we've also been working on a betting module, which will let a you bet on racing. Module. Now, we haven't got all of that signed off, but uh, excited to get that in if we can. So the issue about a betting module is the fact that gambling uh, is this weird uh, thing. I mean, I guess, you know, you could say, oh, well, it's in-game currency and stuff, but CIG also sells their currency. So it would have to be some sort of currency that's like separate from UEC. Otherwise, I think that it could get into a bit of a gray area here, especially since, you know, there is a gray market for crap like this and stuff like that as well as just like, you know, real world uh, things getting in the way as well. Like things that are there for a reason getting in the way of this too. I would love to see it. But also just fixing races seems like something that the gambling module would like, you know, be a bit weird and annoying for as well. I think it'd be really awesome if like the NPCs could race and you could bet on those because, you know, like uh, NPCs are likely not to fix races, but players can. But yeah, we'll see. This does sound cool. It's one of those things that they've mentioned a long time ago when Grim Hex was first coming about. There was like a whole racetrack there for betting and stuff. So it makes sense that they're developing it. Again, they said it's not been greenlit, but they're working on it. We'll see. I really, I, I cannot wait to see what happens with it because it sounds cool. Can? It would also mean, what was this animation? It also means that they would have to have some sort of HUD for you, the spectator, to see what position people are as well. Otherwise, how can you even follow the race, you know? Is that a new dance or celebration? I haven't seen that one before. So just like the Persistent Universe, all of these maps, game modes, and features need to have their own individual go no goes. At the time of recording this, we've got some successful goes for Alpha 320 for the following. The new Arena Commander front end. Okay. The new lobby system. The new spawning system, which allows for multi-crew gameplay. Yes. New death cameras and death recaps. A revamped scoreboard and scoring system. Mm -hmm. Four new racetracks for the New Horizon Speedway. Old Vanderval, Record Memorial, Defford Link, and Halloran Circuit. In addition to the four PU racetracks, the Snake Pit, Miner's Lament, Yadar Valley, and Icebreaker. I'm just happy the to Jericho see them get that new checkpoint. Map, security post career with dogfighting and FPS maps. The new Pirate Swarm Final Wave Capital Battle. Sick. The new Echo 11 Elimination Map. Nice. And new experimental game modes like Single Weapon Elimination, Gun Rush, Tonk Royale, Elimination and Squad and Battle versions. Dude. And finally, the new Infinite Wave Vandal Swarm you'll discover for yourself. Infinite so Wave does it Vandal this week. I'm so Swarm. excited to share all these cool developments with Arena Commander. All right. And got the list here. I just want to give a shout out back to Adam, Adrian, Bryn, Corwin, Kirk, Mark, Ricky, Samuel, and Sean and Simon and the Arena Commander feature team. I'm sitting here in front of the camera, but man, the work is it's, it's thanks to this amazing team that I have. Good lad. And I just couldn't say no to Jared because he's my dungeon master and <laughs> I really don't want him to kill my character. All right. I think the one thing that... So we've seen now two weeks worth of just uh, new features and stuff that they're working on to get in for 3.2. I think that there is one thing specifically that I was kind of... I had my fingers crossed that we didn't see. Uh, and that was um, for the Star Marine stuff. I thought it would be really cool for them to tie in the spawn elevator tech and stuff and actually give us a wave mode where you fight NPCs, you know, like uh, because what is, if not one of the most annoying things in the game right now in the PU, it's those bunker missions when the NPCs don't spawn properly or like they're just dumb and they don't fight back. 
and you don't get that experience that they've spent so much time you know handcrafting here with like you know all the performance captured like you know um just fps combat that the npcs are supposed to be able to deliver you know if they were in star marine for instance you know that all that uh nonsense with like you know the server fps causing issues for performance and you not being able to actually experience how those npcs are supposed to work would all be gone you just have the pure experience without having to worry about the netcode and then you could have it so that and i just to me it just sounds fun uh sadly we did not uh it wasn't mentioned here it's not the end of the world it's just something that i wanted to see uh, but yeah, otherwise, everything else here looks really, really good. Some cool shots here in general. SC is such so, a beautiful game. So, what we game. learned this week? Well, we learned that changes to <laughs> FPS maps should make for a more varied experience in Star Marine game modes. That the first ground vehicles are finally arriving with Tonk Royale. And that we hope the new experimental modes will function not unlike dynamic events for the Persistent Universe, where they can provide timed, direct experiences the team can use for analytics and feedback from things as small as a single pistol to a brand new vehicle to even curious experiences like Gun Rush and a few more things that we're not quite ready to share just yet. Also, if you missed last week's show, go check that out and see everything else that's coming your way from the new Arena Commander feature team in the upcoming Alpha 320. All right. There's some fun stuff in there. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for exploring the process of game development with us, and we'll see you all here next week. Sick. All right. I couldn't help but stare at the background this entire time and see uh, what the heck are we looking at? It looks like it's like the uh, RSI Zeus uh, armor in the background here, or maybe perhaps like, you know, one of those other environmental things. Doesn't look like there's anything, you know, spoilery or anything like uh, sneak peeky. You know, we have some concept art for uh, Orizin. We have like, I think that's the Terrapin. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's a cool corridor. <laughs> Stay past the credits. All right. Oh, there he is with those annoyingly amazing helmets. Is he going to kill his character? <laughs> He's got a traffic keeper for D&D. There isn't going to be a post credits thing in every show. Lies. And meta, because that was one. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's that for ISC. Some cool stuff. Um, yeah, in general. I mean, it's cool to see them uh, adding more things, not only just for the space combat, for FPS as well. Um, they did not specifically say, even though they said that uh, they have a go now for the lobby system, right? They did not necessarily say that they had a go for the private lobby. And that will kind of make or break it for me personally. But regardless, it's cool to see everything else. Being able to hop into a ship with somebody else before you go into any game mode is a game changer. And I look forward to seeing all the newly manned uh, Hurricanes and Scorpiuses and Vanguards in Arena Commander now when 3.0 launches. But yeah, anyway, um, let's, uh, let's move on.